Let's do one more shifty back one. Pop it, suck the knees up, and then see my body counter rotate to pull it around at the end there. And the final switch front side 180. We're set up to go for the box, but no, typical. Skier cuts you up. Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Malcolm Moore here. And today I'm gonna to take you through some real basic freestyle snowboarding. So talking about straight airs on jumps, and then we're gonna get into some backside 180s and switch front side 180s or half cabs. I'm up on the Dizap Glacier today. It's beautiful, it's the summer. That means I've got a really short window to ride, just a couple of hours. So we're gonna do it slightly differently. I'm gonna film some head cam footage, footage Footage, sorry, up here, and this guy. No, nope. over here, you Blanca. Me at home is going to run you through and explain my thought process and everything that's going on. All right, get yourself up. Let's do this. Gloves on, dropping in. And what we have here is a line of four small jumps. That's perfect for learning our back sub 180s and switch front sub 180s. But first, we just need to feel them out. So we're going to drop in. Quick speed check, slow yourself down, and we're just gonna do some straight airs. So stop it there. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, obviously, I'm just riding straight towards the jump. This sounds pretty obvious, but you'll be amazed how many people you see in a bid to try and get their speed correct as they go into the jump, they make all these turns and then when they actually hit the jump, they're going off at a funny angle. And you know, they're taking off on their heel edge or their toe edge, they're going sideways, and it's just gonna make life mega difficult for yourself. You're gonna have a bad time. So, that speed check I just did there, that was really important, and I'll talk you through that in a second. So I've done my speed check, and then you just commit. You just gotta let that board run straight. Now I'm not on an edge here, I'm just on a flat base. And you can see I'm crouching down as well. So I'm gonna hit the jump, but also I want to jump. You know, if I just stay completely static, if I just go over it, you know, I'll get a bit of air time, but not much. It's much better to get your timing right and combine hitting the jump with jumping yourself, if that makes sense. Cool, so I'm crouched down, ready to jump, shoulders in line with the board, head looking where I'm going. Let's just roll it on a little bit further. There I am at the lip. You can see now, yeah, my legs are extended, I'm just, opening my arms up, ready to jump, maximize the pop, the snap from the board. Okay, let's just carry on a little bit more. And woo, there I am, in the air. Perfect, cool. So you can see I've got a good snap, a good pop off the lip there. And now I'm in the air. What I've done is I've sucked my knees right back up again. This is, I mean, this is good practice because one, I mean, it just looks a bit more stylish. You don't want to float through the air like a pencil. But also when you start grabbing, it's better to have the board already there. You know, get used to pulling it up. If you start trying to do grabs and your legs are straight, you're just going to be reaching for the board. You're never going to find it. And it actually sort of helps you be a bit more stable in the air. So still, shoulders in line. You check my shadow, you can see my shoulders are straight in line with the board. Loads of people, the first time they hit jumps, they freak out a little bit and they turn their shoulders to kind of look where they're going. But obviously, if you turn your upper body, your lower body, therefore your board is gonna follow. And then you're just gonna land on your heel edge and you're gonna jutter out like this. It's gonna be horrible. Okay, so don't do that. Carry on, landing, nice. Bend the knees again. And right, I'm just stopping it here. Stopping it here? I'm stopping it here on that speed check. I mentioned how important these are. So normally, when we're instructing people, you know, and we want them to control, our, control their speed, it's all about using your turn shape to control your speed. You know, small turns for steep terrain, bigger turns for more mellow terrain. And that's good technique, but in the park, we don't always have that space. You know, right now, I want to keep going in a straight line. So I want to keep going in a straight line to hit the next jump, but I want to slow it down. What am I going to do? Yeah, just kick that back foot out, lift the toes up, and effectively, it's a heel edge side slip, like one of the first things you learn when you're snowboarding. But the slight difference here, again, if you look at my shadow, you can see my legs gone one way, but my arms are kind of doing that, they've gone the other way. And by making this kind of twist through my body, this counter rotation, arms this way, legs the other way, when I then want to straighten the board back up, I can then pull my body back against itself and get the board going straight. And I'm gonna come back onto that counter rotation in a little bit because it can be helpful in your spins. And when you wanna start adding a bit of style to your spins as well, I'm gonna add some shifties into the back ones later as well. So just remember that. But yeah, super important the speed check. It's always worth practicing them as you're going down the piece as well. 
So let's keep it playing. Come on. Off we go, same again next jump. Point it straight. Okay, so I know now as well, that one was a little slow. This one here, maybe a bit too fast for that one. And I pause it here as well because I want to talk about the landing now on this one. So let's look at my shadow again. You can see I'm quite tall. I'm ready to brace for impact. So my legs, you know, they're not pencil straight, but I'm quite high so that as soon as I land, I can bend those knees and sink down softly. You know, we don't want to send loads of impact up through your joints. So I've talked about your knees, but obviously you also have your ankle joints. If you were to just do a jump here, you know, wherever you are, right at home, maybe don't do this if you're watching us on the loo, not gonna be good. Anyway, I digress. You jump at home, when you land, so you wanna land as soft as possible, you're gonna land on the balls of your feet and then you're just gonna set your feet down gently using your ankles. And we're gonna do the same thing when we're snowboarding. Now what that means, you know, if I land on the balls of my feet, I am actually gonna land a little bit on my toe edge. So if you look closely, you can just see I'm slightly on my toe edge and then almost instantly it's gonna go back to the flat base. This is probably something you will do naturally, so don't overthink this bit. But yeah, if you do find yourself kind of landing on your heels or on a total flat base, it's gonna be quite a thud, quite an impact. So try and you know practice this on your first few goes just doing a straight air. Let's let it go again. Landing, and then yeah, cool. Look at my shadow, you can see knees now bent. Fuse my arms as well to keep me balanced. And let's go off again into the next jump. And again, that one was way too slow. Speed check, there's another feature coming up, a box. First hit, it's always worth doing just a 50-50. Go straight across it. Cool, so it's first run through the jumps and I'm just cruising down now, back to the lift to come back up. And this is my first run, so I'm still getting warmed up a little bit. So a little bit of carving, a few quick turns, little jump as well. Just make sure everything's working, I feel coordinated. I'm gonna switch it around here. A little bit of switch, it's always good practice. And obviously, doing freestyle, we're gonna be doing 180s, we're gonna be landing switch and taking off switch. So, you know, just make sure you feel comfortable with that as well. Ooh, you can see it's real slushing up already. Little wet patches emerging in the snow there. Cool, so back down to the T-bar, back up for run number two. Back up the top, coming down to the jumps. You can just see I'm flexing and extending my legs a little bit, getting warmed up. I'm not young anymore, no spring chicken. Okay, so the first freestyle trick we're gonna try and do is a back sub 180, but one step at a time. So I'm still gonna hit the jumps straight. I'm still feeling them out a bit, trying to get my speed right for them as well. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off a little bit on my toe edge. So as I come in, I'll tell you what, let me just, I'll pause it right here. Okay, so I'm on my toe edge there. Imagine now that I just held that position on my toe edge. The board is gonna come round like that and I'm gonna essentially end up with my backside facing down the slope. So by being on the toe edge, you're kind of already setting the board in that direction. You're kind of initiating that momentum. So if I take off a jump on my toe edge, the board's gonna want to kind of carry round that way, which is why for backside spins, it's really good to start getting used to taking off on the toe edge. When you start spinning, it's just gonna make it that little bit easier. Okay, so let's let it roll. Coming over the jump onto the toe edge, pop, land. Same thing, next jump on the toe edge, pop across. So it really doesn't look much difference. I'm only on my toe edge just a touch. Went too big on that one again, but just to get the feel of taking off on my toes. Another speed check, I'm gonna go in for the box. What we got this time? Ooh, bit off the sides. Tail press, but not so good. Okay, cruising down. Now it's good practice to start doing the movements on the piece before you do them in the air. So you can see, I'm just spinning the board round underneath me. Very small pop there as I go across the piece. And now you can see how they really link into each other. You know, I do a back sub 180, even if I just spin it on the snow, and it's the same direction I'm spinning to then bring around the switch front sub 180. So you hear they're sometimes called half cabs as well, which comes from skateboarding. Steve Caballero invented the Caballerial, which is a fakey 360. But without getting too confusing, I'm just gonna refer to them as switch 180s, switch front sub 180s, because for me, a half cab or a full cab, like in skateboarding, needs to be popped off the nose. And at the moment, we're not doing that. I'm digressing a little bit. Anyway, 
So yeah, still cruising down, still getting warmed up, just shuffling around some ones. There we go. Reverb it back round, switch to regular, and that's the movements we're going to be taking to the jumps very soon. Get down there, get back up, turn that off. Back up at the top, ready for run number three. I'm going to sneak in a few more of those back 780s and front ones just on the snow, just to get ready. And here I am now dropping in. Okay, so first two jumps, we're going to do exact same thing. Toe edge takeoff with a straight air. Really getting a feel for that. Because jump number three, we're going to commit to doing the back 780. Okay, so first time, I'm just going to let it roll. Cool, but let's rewind that back. Okay, and let's pause it here. So, I've just held it here, I'm just approaching the lip, and you can see that I'm on the toe edge, I'm coming in at a straight line. So to make sure that you don't go off wonky, because obviously as soon as you turn into your toe edge, the board's gonna start turning, I've kind of hugged to the right of the jump a little bit, and then I go from heels, and then I just change onto, onto my toes, sorry, just at the start of the jump. That means that although the board is turning very slightly, I'm not gonna go off at a sort of 45 degree angle. And bear in mind here, you know, this isn't full on carving off the lip, okay? We only need a little bit of wind up to make a 180. When you see the pros do 1080s and whatnot, yeah, they kind of might attack it a bit more aggressively. But for us, for 180s, we're just kind of on the toe edge, just a touch. So, on the toe edge, looking towards the lip, you can see my shoulders are still pretty much in line with the board. At the moment, it doesn't look too much different from the straight air that I did on the last jump. Let's let it play. Now on the lip, and we'll pause it right there. Cool. So what did I do differently though? Well, I didn't keep my shoulders in line with the board. I basically used my front shoulder, my left shoulder, and I just started pulling it round behind me. So both my shoulders turned in the direction that I wanted to spin, and my head, I just start looking round behind me. Okay, so I'm now in the air. Again, I've sucked my knees up, that's good. It's gonna give me a bit more time in the air. I've got good pop, and I'm looking down towards my feet. Some people, when they try back 780s, they suddenly try and go like that, and immediately spot the landing, but it's, you know, you're really gonna jolt your neck, and it's better to actually just kind of look down, because you can see the landing between your feet, which is why you can see where I'm looking here, down there between my feet. The problem, what I've done a little bit here, is rather than just kind of look down, you just need to nod down like that, I've fully kind of whoop, bent over at the waist a bit too much. And that's gonna cause me a bit of a problem when I land. I get away with it, but let me just show you what happens. So floating through the air, land, and then we. Okay, my hands are out, they're almost on the snow, almost hand dragged a little bit. So if I bent over a little bit more, they'd have touched the snow and I might have skidded out. So try and keep your back a little bit more straight. Don't get tempted as you look down through your legs to go fully over like that. Okay, let's keep it rolling. So obviously we're landing switch. When we land, head comes up, looking where you're going. There we are, and we're gonna get ready for the half cab. Nice, okay, let's take that one back as well. Good, so we had a lot of practice going off the jumps regular. So for the half cab, I've just gone straight into it, but obviously I've avoided the jump and I've hit the roller first. Reason is switch straight airs, I mean they're a good thing to practice, but they're actually pretty hard. I actually find half cabs much, much easier. But just to get the movements down, obviously we've done them on the piste a bit, going on out there, sorry, some kids shouting, ruining my video. Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, good practice to just take it off the roller first. So you can see my head's up, looking where I'm going, I'm just gonna point the board towards the roller. So here we go, let's let it roll, and then I'll just pause it again here. So, for the backside 180, where we took off on the toe edge, to get us spinning that way, this switch front side 180, we're gonna be just on the heels. So you can see there, my toes are lifted up just a little bit, and I'm just on my heel edge. Same theory, obviously a heel edge turn, will take you around in that direction. So if I'm starting on the heels, you've kind of already set the board spinning in the right direction. What else? So my shoulders, dead in line with the board. And what I'm gonna do, let me just advance it a little bit. 
Boom. So just before I take off, you see quickly my shoulders went from in line with the board and now I've just opened them up. My board's kind of pointing straight down the slope but my shoulders are turned right across. And that's gonna be all the movement I need to get the board to come around in 180. That's what I need to start that spin off. So let's just let it roll. Ball comes around. Awesome. Just land it on the toe edge or flat base, however you like. Speed check into the box. And ooh, starting with a cheeky front board there. But again, coming down the piece, keep using this opportunity to practice your spins. <laughs> what a muppet. Not like that. Bad example. Okay, here we go again. Cool. So obviously it's a bit different here. We're kind of going across the slope. So there's a bit more edging involved. It's not kind of straight down the full line, but same movements. You can see for the switch 180, start my heels. Back side 180, I'm on my toes. Bring it around. Cool. So just get those movements ingrained in your muscle memory. Cruising on down, playing around a bit of a tripod. Now it's a bit of fun, but actually that's the complete same movements that we've just been doing. It's a backside 180 into the tripod, and then as you come out, it's a switch front side 180. Obviously you have to lean all your weight over the nose, but same movements guys, so have a play with them, you know, get creative. Okay, so just getting ready to drop in for my next run through. This time I want to do straight air off the first, still slightly off the toes. I'm going to straight air off the second, off the toes again. I'm going to throw in a bit of a shifty, so you'll see that. Then the back side 180, and then I want to land the switch front side 180 off the final jump. So first jump off the toes, could have gone a bit faster there. Second jump, I'm gonna do the shifty, which is the exact same movements you do for the speed check, just in the air. Now I've got the backside 180, a little bit waving the arms about, needs a bit more practice, and I'm gonna pause it here on the switch front side 180. Cool, so looking at me, my board is 90 degrees, it's half the way round, and everything looks fine, okay? So my approach, my takeoff, it was exactly the same as what we did when we went over the roller. Obviously this time I've just done it off the jump. But what's happened, because it's getting really slushy, the snow's starting to get a bit slower, I don't actually have enough speed here. I'm going a little bit too slow, and I know that if I do nothing here, my board will keep spinning, but not enough to bring it round in a full 180. So I need to do something else to quickly get that board to come round before I hit the snow. So obviously if you land sideways, you're either gonna catch your toe edge or you're just gonna jut it out on your heels. So we're gonna go back to this theme of counter rotation that I kind of introduced with the speed check. I just did it there in the shifty of your board turning one way, but your upper body turning the other way. Because right now, you know, I'm in the air. I've got nothing to push against. So how do I create a bit more rotation? Well, let's get some Newtonian physics, right? Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So if I need to turn my lower body, my board, that way, I'll just turn my upper body this way. Okay, hope that makes sense. That's as much physics as you'll get from me. But just watch this as I let it roll. Yeah, you'll see to quickly get my board to come around, I kind of rotate my upper body in the opposite direction. So let's watch. Right arm comes around. See that? And I'm really kind of twisted as I land. And then yeah, right away, what have we got for the box this time? Whee, just working on those front boards. Okay, so let me know down below as well what you think of this kind of tutorial style. It's a little bit different to what I normally do, but if you like it, you know, those front boards and things, I won't explain them now, but I can do another video on some basic box tricks, stuff like that, maybe doing some rails and whatnot. What would you like to see? All right. But back to what I'm doing, I'm doing more of these 180s, and you can really see that counter rotation actually working a bit more here, you know, because obviously just on the flat, I don't have much air time. To get the board to come around quickly, I might have to kind of throw my upper body in the opposite direction a little bit. Where are you going, man? Where are you going? I'm just gonna jump over some bits on the side. Why not? Go on, do some more 180s. Show us what I'm talking about. This guy, man, I'll have to get a new one. He's uh, not helping me out here, is he? All right, this run, we want 180s of every jump. We've had enough practice, we've got all the ingredients, we know exactly what we're doing. 
So whilst I'm stood here, I'm just watching these guys, seeing how much speed they have. As I mentioned, particularly in the summer, because it's so hot, the snow conditions are really rapidly changing and it's getting slower and slower throughout the day. So let's have a watch of this skier. He's gone straight from there, but he's barely got enough speed to get over the jump. So I know, ideally I could have gone straight from a bit higher up, but I'm just gonna have to make do with going straight there. So no speed check this time. Coming into the jump, try and keep as much speed as possible. Just rock from heels to toes, pop up, suck the knees up, land. You can see I was a little bit on the knuckle, so yeah, could have gone a bit faster. Same thing happens for that switch front side 180, but still not too bad. Managed to pick up a bit more speed here. Yep, land that one nicer, best one so far. And then off the heels, shoulders come round, and I had to do a quick bit of that little counter rotation that I talked about on the previous run, just to get the board to come round. And finish it off with a little front board. Lovely stuff. Back down, you know, have a play with these movements, okay? You don't just have to do backside ones and switch frontside ones on the piece. You know, you can start linking them together, trying to do some butters. You know, a switch frontside one into a backside one quickly becomes a 360. And, you know, have some fun with it. Just snowboard in or just jump off over here. Where are you going? Who knows? All right, let's get into the next run. Okay, the snow is melting. It's the final run of the day. We want to make it a good one. So we're going to do all the things we've learned. We're going to land our backside 180s and switch frontside 180s off all four jumps. But as well, little bonus nugget, we're going to throw in a cheeky little shifty into the backside 180. So we practiced this earlier. I did one as a straight air and it's the same movements used for the speed check, remember, just in the air. Kick that back foot out one way and counter rotate your body in the other direction. Just like that. Oh man, I love that trick. Riding switch, rock back onto your heels. Pull the switch front side 180 round. Let's do one more shifty back one. Pop it, suck the knees up, and then see my body counter rotate to pull it round at the end there. And the final switch front side 180. We're set up to go for the box, but no, typical. Skier cuts you up. Who's had that happen to them before? Bet you all have. No worries, had enough speed for that box. Went straight over, it'll do. Done. Okay, cool. Riding back down, enjoy the ride. Shred is over. Thank you for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit different to what I normally do, but let me know, have you liked this, you know, me up in the corner of the screen here? Ooh, look at that, turning to a river. Bit of a different formula, but if it works, you know, what would you like to see next? Front boards, back boards? Ouch. That was a little bit soft, that landing. Soft, a bit flat, that landing. Hurt the knees. But yeah, let me know what you want to see. 360s, backflips. Probably not going to teach you backflips. I prefer to do them just into the powder. But yeah, anyway, you get the idea. Let me know down below what you want to see. So yeah, as always, there's some more videos up there. Were they over there? I don't know where I am. And yeah, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. Cheers guys.